This show is brought to you by United Healthcare because we believe in the power of volunteering. Thanks for watching Project Volunteer featuring part two of Dream Riders of Kentucky. My co host Teresa Rowell and I are going to show you some more volunteering opportunities and a fun surprise at the end, thanking the founders for 20 years of service. So stay tuned. Have you ever wondered what nonprofit organizations do or about all their different volunteering opportunities? Or what about hearing testimonies from the recipients of their care? Join us on our journey as we walk in the shoes of a volunteer for a day and find out about some amazing organizations that are literally changing the world. And along the way, meet some true surprising heroes making a difference in the lives of others as we feature another Project Volunteer. So my wife and I have had a daughter who at 25 years of age was killed in a car wreck and we were devastated. And we learned pretty quickly that she had many friends and that she was good at helping people who were in trouble and people who had lost friends maybe. But she touched a lot of lives and when we went for the visitation uh, period of time, there were many people that came to us and they wanted us to know about how Megan had made a difference in their life. And she did that. She, she was forever helping others. And she taught her parents how to do it as well. So uh, in any case, uh, finally, after a little bit of time passed and we had met a, a, so many people, we decided that we needed to do something to extend, to, to create perpetuity for the, for the way she lived her life, which was a life of helping others. And she understood, if you want to be happy, you make other people happy. So, you know, goodness, goodness is earned, you know, by, by uh, helping others. So uh, I invited uh, Susie and about four or five or six other people to a meeting at my house on a Saturday morning. And we talked about this kind of a program as a way to extend her goodness. She would have been uh, delighted to have been part of this. But anyway, uh, what did we have? Maybe seven or eight people there? Probably, team. about that. Yes. And so we created a, the very small beginnings of Dream Riders. At that time, we chose a different name. I don't remember what it was. But Greater Owensboro Special <laughs> Equestrians. A little awkward. <laughs> but so in any way, we did have a, had a few people who were willing to work and, and, and you know help us to get things moving. So by golly, we decided that we would create some kind of a program. So we tried uh, creating a 501c3, make yes. ourselves official. Yes. Yes. And the first attempt of that fell through and there were others that succeeded. So we finally became an, an appropriately established 501c3. So we were ready to get going. So we didn't have any money and we didn't have any horses and we didn't have any hay. We didn't have a place to be. So. And we didn't have a place to do a horseback <laughs> ride. So uh, we then found uh, some people who would help us. We found where we could borrow a horse and then we went to the old Cowboys of Kentucky site here in, in Davis County and started the program there. So I think we had one or two clients and one or two uh, adults who were volunteering. And we saw right away that it, that it made people happy. So people who were not very mobile or maybe totally immobile, maybe they came in a wheelchair, they showed us how happy they could become. You know, we learned what happiness was like. Well, we both, a backstory is Mike and I both have daughters who have yeah. special needs. Yeah. And he invited me I'm to this meeting, even not knowing me, yeah. but he knew that my daughter was already involved in a program like this a few counties away. So it was quite an effort to get her there and back twice a week. And so he and I had both individually thought about starting a program like this in Davis County. So when he invited me to this meeting in 2003, I was mm -hmm. all about it because I thought, yeah. you know, there's a lot of kids in Davis County that don't have this opportunity and I had seen it work with my own daughter at this other program. So we were ready to go in 2003 when that started mm -hmm. and we, like Mike said, we picked up horses from neighbors and trailered them out there. When the program was over, we loaded them back in the trailer and took them each to their 
respective homes and yeah. I mean it was much different than what you're seeing <laughs> yes. here much much different we yeah. had very humble beginnings so, so we hardly had a dollar to our name we didn't we, have we, any we didn't have any pay. No money. we had virtually nothing but we had we had a goal we had a plan a, a basic sketch of a plan but anyway we yeah, knew Mark, what we wanted to do down. okay yeah thank you so we had gumption, I guess, is what you could say. We were persistent in trying to do this. We started out one night a week, whereas now we run on a, some sort of program almost every day. Uh, yeah. And we built this facility in 2014. And what you see here was built by, um, we, we hired a contractor to build the shell of the building, but the inside and all the stalls and all the wood on the walls was done by volunteers. Yeah. So we were out here. Oh my gosh! Every day from I mean it was a job eight to five. In we were out time. here. This was in the, in winter, the winter time. Time. We came out here in the winter yep. and this place had no roof and there was mud that deep, oh, snow that mud. deep, and our volunteers persisted and you know we finally and came up with, with the beginnings of a nice building. So this building has been several years in the making. Mm -hmm. But you know so. what we have found in this program is it's not only what we're doing for the riders. But we have so many volunteers of different age groups, as you can see, and it works. For some yeah. reason, yeah. it just works that we're all different ages, but we have a common purpose here. And we have even had um, parents of some of our young volunteers write us letters saying, yeah. what a great thing we have done for their child who's volunteering in teaching them about other people, maybe people who are unlike them. So I think it, that's, a, that's a side benefit we didn't even yeah, yeah. plan. We, we learned some interesting lessons. We have one, one learned really along the way. One wonderful success story was uh, we had a client that was brought to us from Evansville yep. by her mother. This lady was 65-ish uh, or thereabouts. She had been beaten by her husband and left for dead. Mm -hmm. And she could barely walk. She had, she had lost her ability to speak. And so she stayed with us and her daughter brought her to the Dream Matters program every Thursday. And she said that, that the, her daughter, the, that is the daughter was carrying the mother, uh, brought her out there and that was the happiest part of her day, mm -hmm. the happiest part of her mm -hmm. life. So she loved coming to Dream Matters. And so we were delighted to see that she regained her ability to walk rather steadily. She learned her ability to talk, to, to use her voice again. So there, and then we've, we've, been, got, we've, we have been, we've a seen a lot of miracles. Like that. We've we seen a lot, a lot of, of miracles. Like so. Yeah, we really do. And it's yeah. a fun therapy for the kids. You know, these kids who have to have physical therapy, sometimes that isn't pleasant. You know, no. my daughter's had physical therapy and I've seen, it. sometimes it's not fun and it's painful. This, they don't even know they're getting physical therapy while they're doing yeah. it yeah. because it's fun, you know. So we started the program and we have worked in the program but we're the ones that are blessed over and over. Oh, it's so true. So I'm looking around here and I'm it's thinking, true. all these people are my best friends, yeah. every one of them. And it, it's made me proud of our community yeah. because we have seen how, you know, Owensboro isn't a big town. Davis mm -hmm. County's not a big county, but people are so generous. And yeah. we have found that all oh, along yeah. the way. Oh my gosh. There are times when we've thought, we're getting pretty, pretty thin here. We, you know, if we don't get a donation or, and it's always come. Yeah, Every yeah. time we have gotten to that point where we thought, mm. we don't have enough money to buy hay, what are we going to do? And it always, yeah. we have never, ever gotten to the point where mm. we had no money. We had to get on our knees. We've been doing this. About eight years, almost. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. All right, do you have a favorite horse? Uh, I'd say Peanut's my favorite. I don't see him out there, though. And what, can you tell me why? Well, He's gentle. <laughs> and that's a good thing. He's kind and gentle. Um, what do you like the most about riding a horse? What's your favorite thing? Getting to interact, maybe. Mm -hmm. Do you get to know, like you like Peanut, do you get to know their personality? Uh, sort of, yeah. Like you said, they're nice. Is there, is there anything else about Peanut that you like? Hmm. Well, he likes to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. That's not a bad thing, no. right? Mm -mm. All right, so what about the volunteers that are out here? They're really nice. 
I like them. Well, thank you so much for talking to me, and uh, we'll come back sometime, and I hope you're here. Okay. All right. So the first part of leading is probably knowing that they're a prey animal. So part of that is that you want a smile on the lead rope, and that's so that they don't feel trapped. Because their first instinct um, when they feel trapped is to flee and get mm -hmm. away from it because they um, think of it as danger. So you always want to make sure that you have a smile in your lead rope. And then um, this is our communication device, and it's just basically an extension of our arm. So if they need to walk on, then we just tap them a little bit and say, walk on. And then to stop them, you're just going to say, whoa, and then put your crop in front and then just tap a little bit. Okay. And that should slow them down and get them to stop. And then if they're moving a little too fast, then you could put your crop in front and just say easy, and then do that until they slow down to your designated speed. So one of the first things that you're going to want to do is approach her at her shoulder. Okay. And then just pet her and say, good girl, Katie. Good and then girl, Katie. you'll see her look a little bit, and that's just her making sure that you're safe and that you're not going to hurt her. I will try okay. if you're close you by. Try? Yep, yes, I'll be yes. right on her other side. Okay. You can do that. And then you're just going to want to stay right next to her right jawline so she can see you. Okay. Now I tap her back there. Yep. So you're just going to take that crop and tap her and then say walk on. And then kind of start moving forward. Okay, there walk you go. on. Good, Good job. Good girl. Good girl, Katie. Okay, Haley, why do you like volunteering here? So I started out three years ago um, when I was 14, and my main dream job was to be a special education teacher, and I just love horses, so I figured this is the best place to learn about both of them. And then I figured out that my main passion was um, working with the kids and helping them achieve their goals, and so then about a year and a half ago, my dream job changed to a therapeutic riding instructor. So I'm in training right now, instructor training, and then um, taking a lot of classes at Apollo that would help a lot with that. And then I'm going to plan on going to college oh, as wow. a special education teacher while still getting certifications and everything here. So what do you like most about being a volunteer? Why is this so rewarding for you? Um, I think it's a lot of work and time put in out here, mm -hmm. but you see all the little miracles and the kids' smiles and working with the horses, so I think that's the most rewarding part. There's a lot of volunteers out here, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, a lot. And I'm on the orientation and training team, mm -hmm. so I get to train them, and then we have some mentors with us um, that kind of pair up with the new volunteers and work with them. So I'm seeing firsthand a lot of the training. Oh, wow. Do you want to practice a woe? What, a, a woe with this? A woe. So okay. it's a halt. So you're going to stop her. So you're going to put your crop in front All right. and then say woe and whoa. tap her chest. Good, Good girl, job. Katie. Good girl, Good Katie. Good job. Haley, thank you so much. You're, you're a great instructor, by the way. Thank you. You're great. Katie, you are too. Yeah. My horse's name is Stella and We've been walking around, then going straight inside of their arena. Oh, the volunteers are amazing. Um, his, his grandmother actually volunteers, and um, that's what got us started on um, riding. And we've learned so many names, and I mean, this wouldn't be possible without all the hard work and dedication and time and effort they put into it. Um, it, it really makes you know, a, a great experience for the riders. Um, they're almost like a family here. So they've been great to, to meet and talk with. All right, so today um, I'm gonna teach you about sidewalking. Okay. Uh, this is Zeb, and this is Tom, the horse. And these are, this is our leader and our other sidewalker over here. Um, so for sidewalking, what we're doing is we're stabilizing the rider on the horse, basically, so that they can feel safe and secure okay. on them. Um, and one of the ways that we do that is we do an over the thigh hold. So we put like our forearm here, and we're gonna grab the saddle. And what that does is it stabilizes them. So if the sidewalker on the other side is doing that as well, then they can't rock and fall off. Okay. There's 
secure in the saddle. Does that feel good, Jeb? Yeah. Feel good? <laughs> feel safe up there? Then another one that we have is an ankle hold. So um, when we ride, our toes are up and our heels are down. And so we put just a little pressure and we hold their ankle here. And same thing, when we're doing it on this side and the other side, it's stabilizing them in the saddle, helping them keep their balance and be able to stay up on the so horse. So both of you are doing the exact same thing? We're doing the exact same thing, all as we're walking, trotting, whatever we're doing. Do you know um, when to do this or when you're supposed to do the certain positions? Um, depends on the rider, depends on the position. So if some, of, some riders only need an ankle hold, some riders need an over the thigh hold, it just depends on the level of the rider okay. on which one we're doing. Um, and then we have some riders who don't necessarily like to be touched, like just the stimulation of that. And so we do like a, a cuff hold, oh, and that uh -huh. way you're not actually having to hold on to them and ag you know, agitating them. Um, but you kind of pull down, same thing like an ankle hold, but you're holding on there. Do you feel that, Jen? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you like to try? Sure. Okay. All right. So, first one would be an over the thigh. You let me know if I'm doing it right, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And see how that, you can feel how it secures them. Mm -hmm. um, and then, from there, you can go down and then we switch to an ankle hold. You're holding the back of their ankle. Down, just, do you do it with one hand or two? Uh -huh, just, just one, one hand, yep. Yeah. And so you hold there or Go even, back. you can even hold here if you have to, depending okay. on the rider. All right. And then, or you can do a cuff hold. So you would just hold the bottom of their pants and pull down just a little on the cuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, would you like to try it walking? I would. Zeb, you want to, you ready to ride? Yeah. Do you trust okay. me, Zeb? Okay. <laughs> well, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, on. Um, I think we're okay. What? Oh. So, do we want to do, let's start with an over the thigh hold okay. on both sides. And, Zeb, you want to tell Tom to walk on? Walk on. Nice. Red barrels. Sienna. Okay, Zeb. What do you like about this? You like riding? Yeah. Can you tell me anything about your horse? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, do you like Tom? Is he a big horse? Yes. He yeah. is. He is very big. Uh, Mariah, what do you like about volunteering here at Dream Riders? Um, I I like, it's very rewarding, very, very rewarding to see the growth in the students that come. Um, I think just the, the delight in them riding and watch them grow and learn and, um, and you're giving back and you see them get stronger and different things that they do as they progress mm -hmm. and to watch the horses interact with them as well is amazing too. It's good for both of them, isn't it? Yes. Now do I keep holding up here? Oh, so now is we're going to switch down to an ankle hold. Okay, ankle Sorry. hold. No, you're fine. Just talking and forgot. Yep, let's switch to an ankle hold, Marley. All right. Good. So yeah. Zeb, you having fun up there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you can switch to a cuff hold. Here we go, cuff hold. You feel that? Kind of cuff hold on the other side? Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything you want to say, Zeb? No. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mariah. Yes. Thank you all. I've learned a lot. I mean, I've not done this before. Yeah. It's really neat. Now I know how to cuff hold, ankle hold, and over the thigh hold. <laughs> yeah. And thank you. Yeah. All right. So thank you all so much for coming out. I understand that you're both volunteers, and then you have your son, Caden, here with you. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, tell us about how you got started uh, volunteering and how Caden got started coming here to Dream Riders. Okay. Yeah, so Caden, uh, he started riding here at Dream Riders at the age of four. And as parents, you know, we were looking for a way to get involved. We watched him ride and we wanted to get out here and, and see what we could do and be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> since then, we've been sidewalkers with, with Caden and it's a family affair for us, um, myself and my wife, Hannah. 
we like to walk, get out here and walk, and uh, our parents and grandparents, or yeah, parents and grandparents like to watch Caden as well, so it's a family affair, and you know, we're just really happy to be a part of it and get to, to share that with him. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. So tell me what you all do as sidewalkers. Do y'all want to take a stroll? Sure. sure. Is that what you call it, a stroll? Caden <laughs> is like. minimally verbal, so he says a few words, but we use his talker. Are you doing? This is what Caden communicates with us. Okay. So the first thing that we do as sidewalkers is we make sure that his feet are in his stirrups. We make him grab onto his reins, which is something that we work on a lot because he likes to drop them. So as we're walking, we're constantly telling him to pick Kay. up his reins. Okay. And then he tells Katie to go. Tell her to go. Come on, say go. Walk, walk. get your reins. Get your reins. So then we tell Caden to get his reins, and then Katie goes. All right. Let's go. So and how? as sidewalkers with any child, but Caden can get kind of whiny, so we we try to do things like I'll sing to him sometimes mm -hmm. to keep him happy. We talk. Mm -hmm. We count the horses as we go. Awesome. But well, thank you all both so much for sharing your story with us today. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Mike. So what are we doing here? Well, <laughs> what we're doing, we're cleaning the stall. Right. right. And one of the first things you got to remember when you're cleaning a horse stall at Dream Riders, you don't want an animal inside the stall with you for right. safety's sake. You know, it, sometimes two people get in there and there, there's, a, there's a risk of entry either to the animal or the person. Yeah. So what we try to do, we, we, we don't try, let me rephrase that, we do only clean the stalls when there's no animals in the stall. Gotcha. What we do, we, uh, animals, horses are large animals. They eat a lot, they yep. get rid of a lot, yeah. so to speak. And what we try to do is keep the area where this is their living room and their right. bedroom. We want to keep it clean for them. They got good clean food, good clean water, hay, and mm -hmm. we want the area to be clean. So we gotcha. clean it on daily, every day, mm -hmm. sometimes twice a day. But it is natural fertilized. Yeah. We scoop it up. We recycle it. Okay. What we do, we use these are called muck rakes. Okay. And you see they have tines on them and it's kind yeah. of springy. So yeah. what you do, you you scoop it up just like a shovel. Yeah, sure. It's like a corn or scoop shovel. You just scoop it up and tilt it up like that. And the tines, if you have shavings there, we have shavings spread in here to dry the stall and keep it better smelling. Yeah, and you the just shake it out. Yeah, it yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then what we do, we have carts like shown over here in the stall door and we just tip it into it. All right, easy it, enough. Yep, it's all, it, and what we do, we take this cart all down the stall area. We go yeah. ahead and scoop it, just go yeah. ahead. Right. Simple as that, but yeah. you know, it, it's uh, when you're outside, it's a little bit of a trick to it, like if you got gravel or something, or you got grass growing, but that's why those yeah. tines are in there. Okay. So I want to try to save as much of that. Those. Yep, that's what we do. You don't get carried away, you don't want to lose it, but you try to save as much. Right. And that's a natural bedding, a dryer, drying agent in case they urinate in here. Right. All right. We take this, we put it in, we have a facility outside that's uh, where the tractors are parked and we have a, a tractor implement, a farm implement called a spreader. Yeah. And what that does, we can take it out into a field that's not being used by the horses or a designated area. It has a type of a slinger or a thrower like mm -hmm. you would do fertilized. Let me try to get a little bit more. I, I would like to add, you're, you seem very good. You, you'd be an expert at this. I, I, I would make a good pooper scooper. Is uh, that what you're, you're saying? You're very good. You're, you're natural born. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome you here anytime. <laughs> thank you all both very much. And thank you all both for everything you do for Dream Riders. Appreciate we, uh, it. I know this really is a, enjoy it. I know yeah. this is a great organization, right? It's, uh, mm, it's it a is. great organization. I enjoy every day I'm here. Yeah. I know everybody does. It's contagious too, ain't it? You make yeah. a lot of friends. Mm. It's contagious for sure. Well, thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. No problem. No problem. Thanks.
Thanks everybody so much for watching Project Volunteer. Teresa, we've had a blast here at Dream Riders of Kentucky, right? I've had an amazing day and I've learned so much that I want to come back. Oh really my do. gosh, what a great program, what great things they are doing in our community. We want to encourage you to get out in your community and volunteer, right? That's right. You There's know what, Teresa? a lot Teresa? of things to do here. There is. We've been busy all day and had a blast. It's so much fun. We thank you all so very much for your service, for your volunteering and for everything that you do. But I tell you, you know what? There, there, I almost forgot. What? There's some things that we forgot to do. Like what? Oh, you've got to clean out the stall and get the... Well, <laughs> not me. I'm not talking about that. What? I mean, we did the volunteering stuff today already. Okay. We got something special that we want to do. For me? No, not for you. No. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hold Daniel, on. you come oh. up here. For a second. Uh, Teresa, why don't you take one of those? Oh, okay. Let me have the other one. Thank okay. you, sir. Susie, will you join us up here, please? Oh, come on, Susie. Susie. <laughs> Mike. Come on. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. We, uh, you got your microphones? Did. All right, so, tell me this. so, for almost 20 years ago, you started this organization. All right? Yes. And we want to honor you and thank you from all of the people, all of the years that you have helped. And our community yeah. loves you, and we thank you so very much. Yeah. And we want to honor you. We have some plaques for you. Oh, wow. I tell you, this program is not about the two of us. It's about yeah. all of us. Put a rope That's around us here. That's right. Uh, oh, you know, we, we sort of got it jump started, but the motor's running now because you all are here. That's right. Thank you. That's thank right. you. If you want to have a happy life, be a volunteer. You already know that. Yep. You know, be a volunteer. Gosh. All right. So Thank let's you. get you turned around so oh, yeah. the camera can see you here. Oh. All right. Hold it up there so everybody can see those plaques right All here. Right. Okay. And I would almost say bye, but you know what, Teresa? What, Randy? <laughs> There's something else we forgot. It's for me. No, not for you. <laughs> not okay. for you. All right. What? Let's bring our friend Daniel White out here from United hey, Healthcare. Daniel. He just happened to be coming by this way, and he has a little something for you. Yeah. I wanted to present you all with a, uh, a check. Oh, so, oh, so with United Healthcare, we love to support organizations that do great work in the communities oh, they serve. And so oh, we want to present you with a check. The insurance group. That's right. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm, being, I'm having a home visitor tomorrow from the oh, United great. Healthcare. Great. I'm insured oh, by this group. Gosh, yeah, we're so thankful much. for you all and for what you have done in the community. Yeah. Oh. And so when we saw an opportunity oh, to gosh. support you all, we want to well, be thank, a part of it. So. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate it. Gosh, money counts. <laughs> <laughs> we just can't we haven't been able to do without oh. it. Thank you. thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you to really? all the volunteers. Uh, we appreciate you all. Friends. But and our director back wow. here, Sandy, thank you so much. Sandy, come up here. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Everybody, I think that's a wrap. Can we say bye? Bye. bye. If you have an idea for our show, a story of inspiration, or would like to nominate a volunteer hero, get in on the conversation on our Facebook page or go to projectvolunteer.org. This show is brought to you by United Healthcare because we believe in the power of volunteering.